Welcome back. Episode 168 of Chaotically Intolerant today. It is just me today. Um, we're going to go through a real quick show, probably 20, 30 minutes, real tight. We're going to do two Immaculate Grids, football and baseball. NFL training camp is here. So we're going to start with a little bit of, you know, some storylines that I want to, that I'm excited to watch um, for the 2024 season. Um, and then, you know, just a few players. I'm, I'm curious how they're going to do. And then we'll go through a little bit of baseball talk, probably the last, you know, last week of probably the Red Sox more than anything. Um, but just some baseball storylines and stuff like that. Uh, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, check out all of our shorts, check out uh, Chaotically Intolerant Table Tennis League. Let's go. All right, so welcome back. Um, excited. All right, so welcome back. I haven't done a solo show in a long time. Um, again, it's it's going to be you know very uh, very tight show today. Um, just couldn't really get anyone on. We do have some uh, really big news coming out um, probably within the coming weeks or maybe within a month or two um, in conjunction with the Curtis Podcast Network. Um, all the shows under the under Curtis's name. Um, Draft America as well, and Spring Hill Sports Cards, um, along with some other people we're going to be bringing on um, in content and in, uh, you know, editing and stuff like that. Um, but I'm really excited. Let's just, let's go through the, uh, some Immaculate Grids today. I um, can't, can't imagine I'm, I'm going to do very good um, here. You know, I, I just always struggle. Um, all right. So where do we start here? Man, I'm um, I'm so just already lost. A lot of brainstorming here. Where do I want to go with the Red Sox? All right, uh, give me uh, give me Johnny Gomes. Pretty sure Johnny Gomes. Hold on. Give me Johnny Gomes. Yep, there we go. Uh, Seattle. Who played for Seattle? I'm pretty sure there's a Red Sox that is playing right now. Who has played for the Mariners at some point in his career? Uh, but 300 save career. Hold on. Player must have 300 saves when paired with the team. Must have it played at least one game with that team in their career. So the Red Sox are famous for signing really old pitchers. Um, but I'm going to go Kenley Jansen. I feel like Kenley Jansen, I mean, that, 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 that has to be the most reasonable one, right? 17%, yeah. It's pretty, pretty chalk. Um... Angels and Reds. I feel like, I mean, Angels is probably the toughest one. <laughs> you know, the Angels are, they're, they're somewhat, at least as of recently, they're pretty irrelevant. Um, Reds as well, you know, somewhat irrelevant, pretty irrelevant. I'd say that's pretty fair to say. Um, so some tough teams to uh, find players from, but we'll, we'll get it. We'll get some of them. Um, Seattle. Oh, well, this one's an easy one right down the middle. No problem there. Absolutely no problem there. Um, give me... Like, I, I want to say Chapman here. Does Chapman have 300 saves? I don't know. I'm not really going to screw with that one yet. Um, really would have liked to, to throw a Bo Jackson in there for, for Kansas City. But obviously, you know, no White Sox up there. Um, give me... I 
don't know why. I'm having so much trouble thinking of anyone besides Mike Trout or our pools here for this for this little stretch. So, uh, oh, for the podcast listeners, I guess. Um, right now we're down. We have Boston, Cincinnati, and Anaheim. Well, the Angels. I, I'm always going to call them Anaheim um, on the top. And then we have Kansas City, Seattle, and 300 save career in pitching on the bottom. I'm trying to think of like Kansas City and Cincinnati or Kansas City and Anaheim Angels. Uh, <laughs> and I'm trying to think of like different Hall of Famers. Um, I feel like some sort of outfielder. Like I, I want to say maybe not. I, I, so I want to say like something like Alex Gordon. Um one of the, I'm trying to think of one of those like yeah one of, like that 2014 maybe 15 Royals team did Scooter Jeanette play for Cincinnati and Kansas City I feel like that's like a Scooter Jeanette territory a little bit you know it's kind of Kind of. <laughs> Man. You know, I don't like doing Immaculate Grids with only one person. Because it's just quiet. This is beyond quiet. Pretty boring for the for the viewer, I think. Um, Seattle. Why am I blanking on a Seattle? On Seattle right now. Um... I think of a closer. All right, so I think I think uh, didn't Billy Hamilton go to the Royals cuz i remember his his main career was in Cincinnati and i'm pretty sure he went to the Royals if if i'm not mistaken i'm going to go Billy Hamilton here uh not 1888 Billy Hamilton boom let's go let's fucking go um you know the saves is so tough i feel like just for these two teams cuz I think uh, historically they they haven't always been the best. Um, you know, I remember Matt Harvey going to the Angels. I wonder if he made an appearance in Kansas City. That's a tough one, man. Um, oh, oh, yeah. Hunter Renfro. Hunter Renfro, right? Yeah, it was definitely Hunter Renfro. Uh, there we go, right? Boom, let's go. Feels like a little obscure one. Um, oh, what about um, for the Red Sox? Red Sox Mariners. I think I want to say, yeah. Uh, what the hell's his name? Paxton. Paxton. James Paxton, right? Big, uh, big maple. Boom. Let's go. No problem. No fucking. No big. No big deal. Um, Mariners and Angels. Mariners and Angels. I really can't think of a closer from because the only pitcher I'm, I'm really thinking of from the Reds would be Johnny Cueto or Chapman. Is it Chapman? I'm 
could have done Cueto for Reds. For Reds Royals, too. Fuck, man. Um, I don't know why I didn't get Reds Royals with Cueto. Uh, I'm going to take a chance on Chapman. He had to have. He has to have. Yeah, okay. All right. I, I thought it was going crazy. I wasn't 100% sure if 300 saves, you know, if, if he was up there or not yet. I figured he's been in the league long enough and he's made enough appearances. He kind of has to, you know, have 300 saves. But, um, all right, Angels, Mariners, Angels, 300 saves. Anything about closers here? Shit. Um Angels Mariners. It's definitely some I think I could find someone who's pretty pretty obscure. Like uh What would be a funny one? Kinda wanna say like Robbie Cano, but I know that's not that's not, you know, anything. It feels like since they're inner division, it's it's a little weirder to have them, you know, at least no trades inter division. Three hundred save career, that's gonna be tough for the Angels. I, I don't know why. I'm just blanking on any sort of saves. Um, what about? I know Papelbon wasn't there. Um, man, let me think. Let me just rack my brain of closers. Koji. It's like the first one that comes to mind. I don't really know why. Um, and then Kimbrel. I'm, I'm just thinking of the Red Sox closers. Pap, no. Um, I'm going to get away from the 300 save for their career for right now. Go back to Angels and Mariners. Who's a guy that just fucking bounced around everywhere? Who, who's a guy who played everywhere? I mean, Ricky Henderson is the first one to come to mind for a guy who just played everywhere. Um, maybe I'll just stick with Ricky. Just go with Ricky. Let's see. Ricky Henderson. Let's fucking go. No shit. Um, man, he really must have played with the Angels towards the end. Um Maybe it's just a one-year thing. Uh, I'm not going to get 300 save career. Um, I'm not going to get it. Uh, let me do... Let me throw in a... You know what? This guy played on the West Coast. I know he didn't... I know he didn't play. Um, I know he didn't play for the Angels, but... Maybe he had a very short stint towards the end. I'm pretty sure he played all of his years with the Padres, but I'm going to go Trevor Hoffman. Okay. Uh, who was this? Let's see. Sorry, I'm looking at this right now. Um, player stats, regular season saves. Okay. Um, season, seasons. Can I choose a team? Yes, I can. Angels. Who do we got? Oh, thanks. Let's look up. Let's see who has played. All right, three hundred save club. See. 
you know, I feel like an idiot because Lee Smith, you know, he's number three on the save list. And uh, I didn't know who the hell he was, to be honest. Um, I definitely know it's, you know, Kimbrough's not there. Uh, Frankie Rodriguez. I don't know how I didn't get that one. Fucking Frankie Rodriguez. I should have gotten that one. Um, yeah, not good. I mean, actually, that wasn't really that bad. I, I think that was actually pretty good. Oh, uh, Francisco Rodriguez was number one. Um, Beltre, Red Sox, Mariners. Okay. Uh, Griffey was number one. Um, Chapman for Kansas City. Yeah. I would have rather had Chapman for the 300 save, honestly. Um, oh, Grinky. Yeah. Damon. Pap. I could have done Pap. Did I do Pat? No, I didn't do Pat. I did uh, Jansen. All right. Well, let's jump over to football. How about it, huh? Let's do this one. All right. Browns, Panthers. Well, that's an easy one. That's a fucking easy, easy one. Yeah. Easy one. Baker. We're going to go here. I think, yeah, Steve Smith. Easy. Um, thousand yards receiving for the Jacksonville Jaguar. Well, we're going to go here. Um, let's go. Let's just go Michael Thomas. Yes, there. Um, Ooh, the boat. Is that, that's actually going to, that's not going to be true. Because I don't think, ooh. Did he appear in a game? Blake Bortles, did he appear in a game for the Packers? Again, for the podcast listeners, I'm neglecting you guys. Uh, football, we have um, Panthers, Jags, Saints, you know, on the side. And on the top, we have Browns, Packers, and thousand yard receiving seasons. Um, honestly, who is a ja who is a wide receiver that's played for the Jaguars? Um, I'm gonna stay away from that one for a second. Packers, Panthers, and who's someone who's played for the fucking Panthers? Well, 1,000 yards receiving, that has to have been recent, right? Like, it had to have been, what, when the Jags won, won the AFC South the most recently. I feel like it has to be that, right? Is, is that a fair thing to say? Um, who was a receiver for them? I mean, was it Calvin? Was Calvin Ridley there? I don't think he was there. No, he was suspended in 22, I'm pretty sure. Um, maybe he was suspended in 21 and then played 22. I actually can't remember. Maybe he was suspended for the 22 season. Because um, they won it in 22. I'm going to go... DJ Shark, maybe? It's like one of the only guys I can really think of, because like I, w I almost want to say like Etienne last year, because he's it seemed like he was almost their whole offense, or like Evan Ingram possibly, but I don't think a tight end would have had it. Um, and like those old Jags teams were just really not that good, or some of the older ones, you know, back in the day they weren't awesome. So like you'd almost think they would have relied on like Maurice Jones Drew to carry the load, but I, I don't think he would have had that many receiving yards. I mean, maybe a couple hundred. Um, all right. Boom. Let's go. Is he wearing blue? Are you fucking serious? Oh, never mind. I can't do that. Uh, never mind. Um, I 
I'm not going to do this, but I have this feeling that Maurice Jones Drew played for the Packers towards the end. Panthers Packers. That's well, I know that was I think the Panthers did beat the Packers to go to their first Super Bowl. Maybe maybe Favre beat the Panthers. One or the other. That's why I keep thinking about. Can't think of anything else. Um Did Frank Reich ever play for the Packers? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna fuck with that. Um, Packers and Saints. Packers and Saints, man. Um, Browns. I know who it is. Browns and Saints. I know who it is. I can't think of his fucking name. Um, I think he, he played for the Cowboys, right? Uh, It's not Brandon Cooks, but I want to say Brandon Cooks. I know who it is. He also played for the Dolphins. Um, it's, uh, fuck. Um, he was great for the Dolphins, but I think he's, he's like struggled with injuries for a long time. It's, um, it's fucking Jarvis Landry. Boom. Easy. Uh, all right. Jags, Browns. You know, I oddly cannot think of anyone who has played for the Packers besides, let me think. Now, Randall Cobb has been there, was there most of his career until he went to the Jets. Jimmy Graham? Pretty sure Jimmy Graham made an appearance with the Packers. Yes. Okay. Um, um, Jags and Packers. Jags and Packers. And I, I like want to say Jeff Saturday, but I know, I know that's just not true. Um, Jags and Packers, Browns and Jags. Did Mark Brunel make an appearance in Cleveland? I think he did. I think he... I'm pretty sure he definitely did. Nope. Fuck. Um, all right. Did Jake Delhomme play for the Packers? I think he did. I'm I'm pretty sure he was like a backup. Nope. None of that either. You know what? I know this isn't true, but we're we've got the other two wrong. I'm gonna go Blake. Blake Bortles. Yeah, no. Alright, who Reggie, how I don't even know how I didn't get this. Uh, Reggie White played one season for Carolina. I think that was at the end of his career. Julius Peppers, too. That's embarrassing to not get that. I feel like I should have gotten that. Um, Packers, Panthers. I already looked at that. What am I doing? Jaguars, Packers. I'm a fucking idiot. Mark Brunel. 
just the wrong team. Andre Ryzen too. I feel like I should have gotten that one. Um, Browns, Jags. Luke McCown. The Ernest Johnson, that one, maybe. Maybe you should have gotten. Damn. Okay. Well, you know, you win some, you lose some. Um, but let's talk a little, let's talk a little NFL because we are in the week of training camp. I know Christian Darisaw just signed a big extension. Michael Gallup also just retired. Um, so congratulations to him on a great career. I think a six year career, um, which again is more than average. Um, so good for him. Um, congrats. You know, he made his money. Um, but I'm going to go through a few, just a few of the, uh, storylines that I really, really am excited for this year. Um, the Aaron Rodgers one, I think is one of them. Um, I'm, I'm both like excited and not excited because it's the jets and, and you kind of feel like, you know, what's going to happen. Everything's going to crash and burn. It's the New York jets. This is just kind of what you expect. John Amos sold his soul, everything for that Super Bowl. Um, but, you know, now they're saying that the I think Aaron Rodgers was saying that some of the media was misrepresenting what him missing um, OTAs was. He said, oh, it's really just missing a couple of days in July. I feel like when you're saying you're trying to get all the riffraff out of the building and you're saying we just need to focus on football, even missing a couple of days of OTAs is a pretty bad look for you as a as a quarterback, as the quarterback who has basically kind of taken control of the team. You've, you've, you're literally in the cockpit steering the jet. Um, and you know, he could, I mean, he very well could get his GM and his head coach fired after this year if things don't work out. Um, so I'm really curious about that. I'm excited for that. Staying in the AFC East, they're saying Jacoby Brissett is looking like the pro ready guy. Like he's going to be the one to start. Um, but again, we'll see what comes out of training camp. But Drake May is, is a little bit more of the development type of guy. You're, you're going to wait on him. I think they're waiting on him a little bit more, which they should. I, I don't think you have a brand new coach. I think it's fine to, to say, let the vet get in there, let the vet start. And, you know, hopefully, the you know, Drake May will, will become more comfortable. Um, but Buffalo Bills, again. Um, and in relation to that with the Jags, um, I'm really curious uh, how they're going to react with, um, you know, your wide receiver rooms, not as not as scary anymore. You know, Gabe Davis is in Jacksonville. I'm, I'm, I really I don't want Jacksonville to win, but I'm also pretty excited to see kind of what Gabe Davis can do. I, I believe in Gabe Davis. Am I correct? Is Gabe Davis in Jacksonville? I just want to be a hundred percent sure. Yeah, he is. Okay. Um, and then they have no Stefan Dix. So, you know, they have a really young wide receiver room and you're going to see Josh Allen have to be even more of the Superman than he's already been. So, um, you know, that AFC East, man, it's, it's going to be up for grabs. The Dolphins, what are you even going to get out of them? Tua looked ridiculous with that haircut. Uh, uh, but you know, um, I, the AFC East is going to be really, really fun to watch this year. Um, it's, a lot of controversy. Um, AFC North, Joe Burrow got a haircut. I mean, Joe Burrow's health is really the number one thing, but I think the media is going to make his his dyed blonde hair um, <laughs> more of the more of the storyline from high school. Whatever. Uh, Lamar Jackson as well. Um, his storyline. He's a former MVP at this point, and he's still you know he doesn't get treated like one at times, um, but he is an MVP. That's it. You know. An MVP quarterback. Um, here we go. Uh, oh, Ken Dorsey in uh, Cleveland as well. Pretty big deal. Um, them having a new offensive coordinator. Offense has been kind of the issue over the past couple of years. You have Deshaun Watson. Hopefully he's going to be fully, fully healthy. Um, Pittsburgh, Russell Wilson, Dangerous. Can he just be stop kissing babies, <laughs> like uh, like Sean Payton said. Um, but I think I think Pittsburgh is going to be really the place for him. You, I think they can bring it out of him a lot. And I know their win total set at eight and a half. So, um, you know, sprinkle a little bit on there. Mike Tomlin's at 17 straight winning seasons. Sprinkle a little bit on that, you know, over eight and a half. Um, the Colts, I'm not going to say Anthony Richardson. I'm going to say the battle, um, Donnie Mitchell and... Alec Pierce, that that training camp battle. I'm really curious. I, I think AD is going to win out. 
I really do. I love Alec Pierce. I think AD just has the speed that the Colts really need in the field. Um, you know, in, in the in the wide receiver core, he's a fast guy. He's tall. He's he can go up and get deep balls. Um, and Alec Pierce has had his chance, and I think he'll get beat out at this point. I think um, AD is going to at least get this get the start at the beginning of the year. But again, we'll see. You know how long this goes. Um, what are the Steelers going to do with Justin Fields? That's the big question. I mean, he's an incredibly physically gifted individual, so you don't want to just leave that sitting on the bench. Um, I think Slash Stewart was his name. Uh, Slash Stewart, he was a quarterback for the Steelers. They drafted him in the first round, I think in 94, and they said, hey, O'Donnell's coming in. He's got one more year on his contract. We promised it to him. We're going to use you in other ways, including as a wide receiver where he caught a touchdown pass in the 95 AFC championship game uh, next couple of years. I think he started for the Steelers as quarterback. So um, really interesting storyline. I would love to see them use him in sparing ways and um, different, you know, different situations. Um, maybe not special teams. I don't know if that's really the smartest way to, to use him maybe on some, uh, you know, swing routes, some, some uh, maybe long, you know, long deep passes uh, plays that are really, kind of lower risk for injury. Um, and then let's see, I'm, I'm kind of going to skip over the AFC West. You know, I don't know. It, it just feels like it's the Chiefs every single year. Um, I'm just not going to bet, ever bet against the Chiefs. I think we all know. They are saying Kadarius Tony might be used in a wide receiver role. So that'll be interesting. Um, the Dallas Cowboys, it's the same thing every year. Uh are they going to finally, finally do it? Really? No, probably not. Um, you know, uh, Dak Prescott has a contract coming up. Let's see if he's going to put his nuts on the table <clears throat> and prove his worth. Uh, Daniel Jones. Love to see Daniel Jones. Really curious about Daniel Jones. I think that's the, lead, that's the leading storyline in, in New York. But again, I'm, you know, I'm a Colts fan, so I'm going to pay more attention to the Colts. Um how are they going to use, how are the Eagles going to use Saquon in that scheme? How are they going to use that? How is Nick Sirianni going to maximize his talent level while also realizing, hey, this guy has a history with injuries. So we need to make sure we protect him at all costs. And I'm also curious, what's that game in New York going to be like? I mean, is he going to be dead or, or you know, because we know MetLife isn't exactly the best stadium on the planet, but we know the Giants fans will show up. So, you know, what are we going to see from them? Um, commanders, I really want to see Austin Eckler kind of get used properly. I love Austin Eckler as a running back, um, and I want to see him uh, be properly used. And, and hopefully he's going to share enough time with Brian Johnson because I also love Brian Johnson Jr. Um, I think both of those backs are fantastic. They have a great backfield right now, um, and I'd love to see love to see what they can do there. Um, Chicago is like one of the leading ones, so I'm not really going to talk about that. Uh, Detroit. Oh, Green Bay. They're going into this training camp. I think Jordan Love is going to sit out until they get a contract going. So um, that's a big question. Really big question about the Packers. Um, are they going to get that contract ready to go? Um You know, the NFC South, are we going to see, they feel very boom or bust, just like the AFC South. The NFC South and the AFC South are, are repeatedly just the same. They always feel the same to me. They're going to be boom or bust because you can make a case for the Bucks, the Falcons, the uh, Panthers, and the, uh, what the hell are their names? The Saints as well. You can make a case that all of them will at least be competent teams. You know, the Bucks with Baker Mayfield, are they going to turn it on? Maybe they can win 11 games this year. Um, the Panthers, are, are they going to take a step forward at least and hopefully not have the number one pick for the third year straight? Uh, are you going to see the Falcons turn on the gas? You know, new head coach, new quarterback, expensive quarterback in Kirk Cousins. Is Kirk Cousins going to pick up where he left off with his Achilles injury? Um, and then the Saints, Saints are the most boring team. To me, honestly, um, sorry to Saints fans. I feel like a lot of Saints fans would actually agree with me when it comes to that. Um, is Derek Carr going to figure it out? 
are, are you going to get to see that like MVP season, Derek Carr? Probably not. Um, but are they going to be able to maximize his talent? Is is the really the big question? And you know, Taysom Hill, get him in a look. Get I want to see a little bit more Taysom Hill at quarterback. I would love to see a little bit more Taysom Hill at quarterback and and really using his body. Um, in the NFC West, Cardinals. Are they going to be competent? Is Kyler going to figure himself out? I felt like Kyler was coming back a little bit last year. We were starting to see a little bit of the Kyler of old. Um, but are we going to get that back completely this year? Or is it just going to be another, you know, Cardinals year? Um, the Rams, uh, what are the Rams? I don't even, I don't know what to expect from the Rams this year. I, I didn't expect them to be anything last year, but you forget they have Matt Stafford and they have Cooper Cup and they have, you know, all these young guys now. Or are you going to have a, a good second year from, um, what the hell is, what the hell is his name? Uh, I don't know why. Puka Nakua. I don't know why that's... I, he killed me in fantasy. I should have... I really should have known that one. Um, San Francisco. So I did just hear something about how Kyle Shanahan told Bill Belichick, hey man, if you want to come here, it's it's kind of your team. You know, you can do what you want. And Bill said no. So really curious. I, I, I really would like to know what would have happened <laughs> in San Francisco. Can you imagine if Bill lures Tom Brady out of retirement to replace Brock Purdy and we have Brady Belichick again in San Francisco with all of those weapons, that would be disgusting. I would just throw up. I would, I would not want to see, I would be personally, I just walk away from the game for a bit. You know, I, I would, I would rage quit because giving Tom Brady and Bill Belichick all of those extra weapons, because a lot of people would say, Oh, well the Pats, you know, they, didn't have a lot of like those super superstar offensive weapons besides, you know, really Randy Moss, I think. Um, but having all those superstars, it would almost, why even play the season? Right. Um, and then Seattle, Seattle, you're always watching for Gino. I think Gino is going to be the leading storyline. As long as he's, you know, in the building, he'll be the leading storyline. Is this guy going to continue? Are we going to see a better season from him this year? Um, are they going to be able to improve? What are they? Nine and eight? Yeah, they were nine and eight. So, you know, we're going to get to see some some sort of improvement from that. Um, but, you know, the, the main thing that I wanted to do today is just remind everyone that football is here. Football is coming back. That long summer, the, those stupid MLB uniforms, Nick Castellanos just ruining all these moments. All of that's going to be in the past when football gets here. I think I think baseball is personally one of my is probably my second favorite sport because just football has just launched itself above above and beyond. Football is just you know you you can say all you want, but it's football, man. Um, <laughs> but we have one week till the trade deadline. Um, I, I do want to take a little bit of a look at the standings now. The Red Sox. Had a tough weekend in L.A., um, you know, but I, I don't want to say that that was a hor that wasn't worst case scenario because they look competitive, and I think that's what a lot of Red Sox fans really would have wanted to see is just them look competitive with the Dodgers. Although it was frustrating to blow two leads in you know late late in the game, um, and then Cooper Quizwell gets shelled in Game Three, um, but again. You have to take the good with the bad. This is a team that we didn't even expect to do anything. And now they're sitting here. Where are they? Should be in a wild card spot, right? Yeah, game and a half back of the Royals. So the Red Sox are sitting there. Um, the Houston Astros are disgusting, by the way. Um, the Houston Astros just being in it again, being in the division, you know, leading the division is ridiculous to me. The Mariners are now three games back of a wild card spot, one and a half back of the Red Sox. Um, let's see here. And then the New York Mets, once again, the New York Mets just doing that thing where they're hanging around, they're hanging around, they're hanging around. They're trying to give their fans hope. You know it's going to come crashing down in August, right? I think that's that's just what the New York Mets do. 
It's going to come crashing down in August. Frank, we're going to get another vintage Frank the Tank rant video. You have San Diego. I mean, you have San Diego, Arizona, and Pittsburgh all within a game and a half of the Mets. This is just brewing, brewing for a New York collapse, a New York meltdown. Um, Yankees playing slightly better coming out of the break, um, but just the city of New York, they're, you know, especially Queens is really more riding high, I think. And you can just, you can just feel it. You can just feel it in your bones that it's coming. Um, Chicago, San Francisco, Cincinnati, <clears throat> Washington all have all kind of looked to drop out of that race. Um, curious who's going to sell, who's going to not. Um, I think Mike would, would have a lot better insight. Uh, we didn't get to have Mike on that today. Um, damn, we went for 40, you know, at least recording for 45 minutes. Um, sure. Some, ed- some stuff will get cut in post, but, um, that's a good place to stop. Again, this was more of just an informal, quick, quick hitting show. Um, make sure to like, comment, subscribe. Go check out uh, Category and Tall and Table Tennis League. Um, and we will see you next Wednesday.